Guitar World's Tech Education. I'm Matt Bruck, and today I'm going to be answering a question from Connor Smith of uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He's interested in the basics of soldering. Soldering is a skill that took me a long time to get together, but it's not that difficult. It just takes kind of like a lot of practice. One thing you want is a really good iron. This is a Weller iron. Uh, it's got an adjustable temperature control. I like to leave it set at about 700 degrees. That makes the tip of it hot enough to make the connections that I need, but not so hot that it starts melting stuff prematurely before I'm kind of done soldering. You should always have a wet sponge. This is, uh, get these at electronic stores and I've pre-soaked this in water. You don't need it to be like super soaked, but it shouldn't be dry. And because what you do is you clean the tip of the soldering gun with it to remove debris and so forth. You want to use the right kind of solder for working on guitars. Uh, this is a rosin core solder um, and its content is 6644. Uh, this is made by Kester. Uh, there's a lot of people out there that make solder but I like the Kester stuff and uh, the, the balance of uh, rosin core is important. So basically 6040 rosin core and then you need a pair of wire strippers, good pair of strippers. Get these at any kind of like hardware store or electronic store or something like that. A pair of needle nose is good for holding a wire. And I'm just going to demonstrate what it's like to prep wires for soldering. I've got a uh, reissued Greenback 25 watt Celestian speaker here. And I'm going to wire these, terminal, these terminals with these wires. So the first thing you want to do is prep your wire. You take a clean wire with a clean cut on it and you want to come back about a quarter inch to a half inch okay and in the in the needle section of this you can see where it grips the wire it doesn't cut the wire so you just kind of come around it half inch back and you don't pull it hard don't clamp down on it hard clamp down on it gently because all you want to do is strip the jacket off the wire and you turn the wire press it again turn the wire press it again, okay, and then you pull it off. Pull the jacket off, okay, now you've got your wire exposed. Take your fingers, your index finger and your thumb and twist it so that it all lays tight against itself. They do the same thing with the black wire, crimp it, turn it, crimp it, turn it, crimp it, pull gone. Twist it and that's how you prep wire. So now I'm going to get my soldering iron. I'm going to clean the tip. I'm going to put a little bit of solder down on it just so it has some heat going. Just flow it on. Flow it on. And I'm going to lay the wire against the solder and I'm going to bring the tip in. I'm just going to flow some solder on there. See how it's flowing on there? It's not a lot. It's just enough to give it some solder inside the wrap. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing with the red one. Now you have two nicely prepped conductors. I'm going to trim them because I don't need that much length. So I'm just going to trim the, the nasty end off of it and I'm ready with my wire. Then I'm going to go to the terminals. Uh, color code, when you have a red and black wire, black is negative, red is positive. You'll see on the terminals I've got a positive indication right here. That's where the red goes. Now I have prepped these terminals, but I'm going to show you that if they're not prepped, you just kind of want to flow a little bit of solder in there so that they have some fresh solder and a little bit of heat before you go putting your wire on. I'll do the same thing with the negative terminal. Now I'm ready to make a connection. Uh, one of the most important things you can do when you're making a connection 
<coughs> uh, when you're soldering a connection is make what's called a mechanical connection. And that means that without solder, that the wire is connected to the lug or the terminal, like that. Okay. So what I did was I took my needle nose, I crimped the wire into sort of a U-joint, I'm placing it in, and now I'm going to just pinch it. Okay, now you have a mechanical connection. So even if your solder joint fails, you still connect it. Hook it on, pinch it. Now I have two mechanical connections. This would carry signal right now if it wasn't soldered. Take your iron. You've already got solder on your wire. You've already got solder on your lug. I'm going to lay the soldering iron down to create some heat. And then I'm just going to lay the solder into the area that I want it to be connected. Same with the black, the negative terminal. Lay it on, create some heat. You don't want to leave the iron on in the area any longer than you need to. Only as long as it takes to make the solder molten and uh, connect with the terminal and the wire. Your joints should look pretty clean. They shouldn't be, they shouldn't have any of this like black crap in there. They should be clean and bright silver. And that means that you don't have any kind of residue. You haven't melted any of the jacket into the connection that you're making by mistake. They're just nice clean connection. And that's pretty much it. It might take you some time to get better at it, but you could al always get an iron, some solder, a stripper, some wire, and just practice. Uh, this is everything you need to know to get started and practice and get good at it. It could save your ass someday. Alright? Take it easy.